firefighters are battling blazes across northern New South Wales on the second day of the bushfire crisis. Here's what we know so far. Two people have been killed. At least 150 homes are destroyed. Several people are missing. Three emergency warnings remain in place. Thousands of people have been evacuated. We now go live to the New South Wales Rural Fire Service Commissioner, Shane Fitzsimmons, for an update on conditions. Shane, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I know it's an exceptionally busy afternoon there. Uh, tell us the latest on what conditions are like, because it was around this time yesterday that we really started to see things quickly deteriorate. Yes, good afternoon, Charlotte. Well, fortunately, we haven't got the conditions we saw yesterday, uh, but the difference today is we've got so much fire burning across the landscape but we've still got a hot, uh, dry and windy uh, 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 weather influence that's driving fire behaviour. We've still got 77 fires burning, 46 of them are not contained. We've got three at the emergency warning level now and another 15 at watch and act alert level. Uh, that's indicative of the fire behaviour. Uh, the three fires burning at, at, at emergency warning level. We've got one south of Taree that's burning right out to the coast and impacting communities like Old Bar. We've got the other large fire complex to the, to the northwest of Port Macquarie uh, and Hastings that's burning uh, north of the Oxley Highway. And we've got another fire near Lismore uh, that's burning and we're sending and suggesting people go further south uh, to safer places like Nimbin. Shane, we've got about <coughs> three days here before we really see uh, conditions deteriorate again and take a turn for the worse. What will firefighters be doing over these three days to try and gain any control over these blazes? Uh, they're focusing right now, Charlotte, on some fires, still trying to simply save and protect uh, for, uh, communities from the impact of fire. But the other work that's going on is trying to establish some form of containment. Uh, lots of machinery, heavy plant bulldozers, graders, uh, back burning on the ground, uh, aircraft from the air. They're all trying to consolidate and lock in as much as they possibly can across the enormity of these fire grounds. The sad reality is, however, despite the very best efforts of everybody involved, we simply aren't going to have containment across these fires between now and the worsening of the weather conditions as we head into Tuesday. And unfortunately, the weather conditions of Tuesday are going to be somewhat similar to what we experienced yesterday, uh, certainly across the northeast. But unfortunately, uh, those worsening weather conditions are not just going to be in the north of the state come Tuesday. They're going to be extending right out down into the greater Sydney environment, across the Blue Mountains, out into the central west, uh, down into the Illawarra and Shoalhaven areas, and even the potential for the far south coast. So we're going to end up with a much, much larger geographic footprint of New South Wales uh, impacted by what's looking like severe and extreme widefed, widespread fire dangers as we head into Tuesday. It's a really interesting feeling at the moment because on any other day, three emergency warnings would feel uh, exceptionally chaotic. But I guess in comparison to yesterday when we had 17 emergency warnings at its peak, uh, it feels a lot calmer. But that's certainly not the case on the ground, is it? Are, are lives still at risk with these three fires that are at an emergency level? Uh, that's a really good point, Charlotte. Uh, and isn't that sad? Um, uh, you're 100% right. Um, we cannot lose sight of the fact that three of these fires are at emergency warning level for a reason. They are directly impacting or imminently impacting people's livelihoods, people's homes, communities, lives themselves. These fires are still impacting people right now and we've got, we've got 1,500 firefighters out in the field desperately trying to save and protect as much as they can as well as working on uh, another 15 fires that are at that are at watch and act alert mm. level because conditions could change uh, throughout the afternoon, not to mention uh, uh, the other, you know, up to 70-odd fires that are still burning. Uh, we, we, we need to be focused on the fact that these emergency warning fires are there for a reason because the risk is real and the impact's happening right now. We had such an early start to the bushfire season this year and it has been uh, so awful and so severe with these emergency fires that we have seen. Is, I know this is an absolute tragedy that we have seen, but will it mean that because we've seen so much bushland burnt through already that we could see less fires later in the bushfire season? Oh, look, I'm quite concerned, Charlotte, uh, that if anything we're going to see more fires as we close through the season. And to give you an idea, 
um, the fires that have been burning predominantly in northern New South Wales uh, over the last couple of months and certainly the intensification of activity we saw yesterday. Uh, the area consumed by fires in hectares uh, uh, so far this season uh, is more than double, uh, is more than double, nearly triple uh, the entire area of New South Wales that was burnt out for the whole season of last year. Mm. The reality is from the Queensland border to the Victorian border, all down our ranges to the west of the ranges, across the ranges and out to our coast are all expecting above normal fire danger conditions this year, driven predominantly by the drought and the lack of moisture in the landscape, the lack of, the lack of moisture in the vegetation. So unfortunately we've got the worst of the fire season still around the corner. Mm. We're not even in summer yet. We, we, can ex we can expect a lot more to come and a lot more to come our way and traditionally the fire season starts in the north and as the months roll on, it extends further south and we end up with a, with a spread of fire activity from the Queensland border to the Victorian border. So unfortunately, uh, it's a sobering outlook, but the reality is we can expect a lot more for fire and we can expect a lot more country to be burnt. And sadly, we're likely to expect a lot more communities to come under impact this fire season. Just finally, uh, before I let you get back to what's obviously going to be a very busy and long day for you, Shane, do we know... Uh, I, obviously it's very early in the investigation, but do we know what has sparked any of these fires? Do we believe that any of them may be deliberately lit? Uh, we don't have that detail, uh, it's fair to say, Charlotte. Uh, it, it, what I can say is that a number of these fires uh, that developed and grew yesterday are fires that have been burning for weeks, indeed months. Uh, a lot of them started from lightning and dry lightning storms that have, that have occurred over the last few weeks and the last few months. A lot of the fire activity yesterday uh, was also uh, spot fires landing 5, 10, 12 kilometres ahead of the main fire fronts, starting new fires, new ignitions uh, and rapidly accelerating the advancement of those, those fires across the landscape. However, we do, we do look at all the fires. We do have the investigators uh, that will go through uh, and look at cause and origin of the fires, but I've got no information at this stage to suggest uh, anything was deliberately lit uh, or lit with malicious intent. All right, well, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Shane. Well done to you and all of the employees there and workers at the RFS, of course, the volunteers as well, who are doing a tremendous job throughout this emergency situation.